Hi friends, welcome to new video of Code Legend. In this video, we will see thread synchronization methods used in C-Sharp.net. So in C-Sharp.net, there are multiple ways we can synchronize the threads. So these are the topics which we will be covering in this video. That is lock, monitor, manual reset event, auto reset event, mutex and semaphore. So let's see what exactly is lock. So I am in Visual Studio and this is a default view which you get when you create a console application. So in the main thread main method, I will try to create multiple threads first. So I will use a for loop and I will create five threads. So to create start thread, I need to have some method. So first I'll create a public static void. Uh, some do work method which simulates some long running work so in the real time application there will be some method which is going to do a long uh, work so in this what we will do is we will just print uh, console.write line and we'll say thread and the number which we will get is from the thread dot current thread dot manage thread id so this is a unique identification number which is assigned to every thread by the CLR so we will say thread this number starting and then we will simulate a work by doing a thread dot sleep maybe we will sleep for around two seconds and then I'll just copy paste this code and I will change the content as completed. So now uh, we will see a log saying thread the number starting and then we will sleep for two seconds and then we'll see thread so and so completed. So now let's start let's start a thread. So I'll say thread new thread and I'll pass do work method here and say start so this will start five threads one after the other and at the end here i will say console dot read key so that my console in doesn't get closed automatically after the execution so now let's see what happens when we execute this so in the output you will see that all the five threads started together and all the five threads completed so this is how actually a multi-threading works but now you want uh, to synchronize these threads so that means this part of the code is some uh, special code which you don't want all the thread to access at a time so normally in you call this type of code as critical section so it will be a file reading or writing out thing uh, process or network related process and you don't want all the threads to access it at a time so what you can do is you want to synchronize in such a way that only one thread can access this at a time so the simplest way which I have told is using a lock so when you say lock the lock expects a object which it used to lock uh, so we will create one private object maybe a private static of object type locker equal to new object this can be of any type uh, generally we use of general object type so it doesn't matter what type of object you pass here actually so i'll just pass locker and i'll put this code in this locker section so now this particular code is within the lock so now if with this code if you run you see the difference now when we see one thread starts and as soon as that thread completes other thread starts and so on so at a time you can see only one thread is able to access that so this is how lock works so this is the simplest way how you can synchronize the thread now we'll see what exactly is monitor this is the code which we used for lock now we will modify this same code to use monitor so monitor is not very much different from lock the only difference is we will remove this lock and the parenthesis instead we will use 
monitor dot enter and this again expects an object so we will use the same locker object and at the end we will use monitor dot exit and that object so with this again when you run you can see it behaves the same way how it was behaving for the lock but the difference when it comes to monitor is you have the flexibility of modifying the code in such a way like you can control even your exceptions like for example i can put a try block here i can put all this code inside a try block and i can have a catch so suppose if at all an exception comes in this particular part of the code i can have some uh, error logger which you might uh, log into a file or something and at the end in the finally block i will move this exit code into finally so now what it says is like we are starting a lock here using monitor and we are doing some work but if at all some exception happens in this area we will catch that exception do the error logging and then finally we will release that lock so if you want to try out for example here uh, or maybe i can try here i will throw a new exception so this is not the correct way how you, you should be doing because this is just for a trial because the moment you put here visual studio starts saying unreachable code because once it is thrown an exception from here this line will never be executed so now if you execute now you see only the starting because you will not see the end message because every time a exception is thrown but that exception is caught and logged and the lock is released and that is why you are seeing the next thread starting so this is how monitor works now as we have seen the simple lock and monitor methods now we will see what is manual reset event so let's consider a situation wherein uh, you don't have a simple block of code which every time needs to be logged between threads and in such situations you cannot use lock or monitor suppose there is a writer thread which normally writes into a file and there are reader threads which reads from that file but you don't want the reader threads to read when the writer thread is writing so that means when the writer thread is in progress you don't want the reader thread to access that file so now let's try something similar so let's create a public static write method so uh, i'll say write Oh, sorry here yeah, they should be white so public static write so in this i will say console dot write line and i will simply print thread and the thread number as we have seen how we can generate it similar in the log code uh, thread dot current thread dot uh, manage thread id writing so now this writing starts and then we'll simulate a situation wherein it writes for around like 5 seconds and then we will say the writing has completed writing completed so this is the write method similarly let's create one more read method which reads that particular file so this is a read and we'll say reading and it is suppose or maybe first we'll say waiting and we'll say reading completed so now you want like when this particular method is going on you don't want these methods to be called so in such situations the best a uh, thread synchronization method which you can use is manual reset event so let's see how we can create that you can see manual reset event under system threading uh, namespace you create an object of that 
and in this situation since we are dealing with all static methods i will have to create this also a static variable and now this expects an initial state so initial state means initially when you create this object and use it first time you want it to be in a signaled state or a non signal state uh, this i will explain how what exactly it is so let's keep it as false that is not signaled so now suppose we are starting a new thread so we'll say new thread and this thread is the right thread so we'll say right method dot start so this is starting of a writer thread so we'll say starting writer thread now there is a for loop and in the for loop there are around like five reader threads so we'll say new thread of read dot start so now you can see these are five reader threads and this read happens quickly whereas the writer takes around five seconds of time so now you want when this guy is writing you don't want anyone else to access the file so in this situation what you will do is first as soon as you say just writing mre dot reset so reset and you can see one more method as set so this is nothing but setting the value of the event so that is like you have given the default as false so it is nothing but reset if you set it as true it is like set so you reset the manual reset event and then once the work is done you will say mre dot set meanwhile the threads you want which you want to wait there you will say underscore mre dot wait one so let me explain what exactly is happening this is a manual reset event in this method whenever a thread comes it will check seeing this method as wait one so that means it will wait here till he gets the signal if the mre has been reset that means it's in a false false state this guy cannot proceed unless and until he gets a signal so the signal will be provided by mre dot set so let's see how this works when we press f5 you can see all one thread is writing and all the threads are waiting once writing is completed it is signaled and all the threads starts reading so maybe this was showing a delay that is because we have introduced a delay here so if you say remove this and if you say reading so maybe in this situation it will say waiting and then it will say reading so now when you run it you can see again the thread 3 is writing rest all the threads are waiting and once thread 3 writing completes all the guys starts reading so in the manual reset event one set simply raises a signal to all the threads which are waiting using the same object of mre and as soon as a set is done all those threads starts working so this is how an mre works and mostly it will be used in such situations where one thread is doing some work and you want other threads to wait till he completes his work next we will see what is auto reset event so just now we saw manual reset event wherein you found like when one thread signals all other waiting thread starts automatically whereas auto reset event is slightly different from it so let's jump into visual studio so this was the code which i was using uh, but i have modified it slight slightly now i have only five writer threads which are writing so in this case now you might have a situation wherein uh, like a s code exists which writes into a file or it uh, does some network related work but you don't want it to happen at a time you want the other threads to wait and only once the signal has been given by the current thread the other threads should proceed so now in such situation you can use auto reset event so that can be done by using auto reset event which is available under system.threading namespace and you can create some object of it and as we are dealing with static methods i will 
declare this guy as static and again similar to how auto manual reset event uh, expects an initial state auto reset event also expects an initial state so let me give the initial state as false that is non-signaled so now in this situation uh, we will introduce one more console saying uh, similar to this writing we will say one more waiting so now so and so thread is waiting mode so now what we will do is here and we will use the are object dot wait one so that means it should wait till he gets a signal so and at the end once he completes we should say set but now there is a catch like a uh, first time for example you are starting five threads the first thread comes he says waiting and but when he comes here he will check what is the state of the are which we have given as false that means he will not proceed when the second thread comes he will also wait so similarly all the five threads will be waiting but nobody will be able to give the signal so in such situation we should not be giving the initial state as false instead we should give it as true so now the first thread whoever reaches here will get the are in a signaled mode so he will continue but rest of the threads will be waiting and when he signals then only the next uh, thread will get the access so now let's see what happens when we run this so now you see one guy is means one guy is writing rest all are waiting as soon as that guy has completed the writing another guy has uh, got the access when he completed the next guy got the access and when he completed next guy got the access and it goes on so you can see at a time only one thread is allowed in auto reset event whereas it is different from manual reset event wherein we use uh, signal once and all the waiting threads just goes on but in this auto reset event only one thread gets the access but here there is a catch now for example here in the main thread so as you know our main method is also running on a thread which is a main thread and suppose there after a sleep of around uh, three seconds uh, what i will do is i will use the same are object and say set that means ideally the signal should be given from here but from the main thread i will use that same object and give a signal now see what happens now one thread is writing rest all are waiting now fourth started writing fifth started writing when fourth was still writing so now you can see here multiple threads are going parallelly that is two threads are going parallelly why it is happening like this because we have given set from the main thread which in ideal cases should not be allowed like in few situations you don't want any other signal to give a signal it should be like the situation wherein the thread who acts started this wait one should only give the signal so are creates a problem in such situation and such situation our next topic comes into help which is mutex now let's see what happens in the case of mutex so we'll jump into visual studio and this was the code which we were using for auto reset event now we will modify this code in such a way that we use a mutex so i'll for time being i'll comment out this code and i'll comment out this code as well so instead i'll create a static mutex underscore mutex as an object equal to new mutex and this there is no uh, uh, requirement of passing the initial state in the case of mutex and here where we were using the are dot wait one we will use mutex dot wait one and where we were setting the signal we will say mutex dot release mutex so now in this situation it works similar to how are was working so now when let's see what happens with mutex so now one thread is writing rest all are waiting 
and with that thread completed writing another thread started writing that thread thread completed the another thread started so it works similar to how ARE is working it allows one after the other so the problem which we discussed in ARE was when we are setting the ARE from any other thread then our complete synchronization was going for a toss so now let's try similar to this code instead of ARE I will try to set the mutex so mutex dot release mutex so sim this is similar how we were doing for ARE so now when we run this now see what happens so now one thread is writing and after two seconds it throws an exception so the exception says object synchronization method was called from an unsynchronized block of code so what this means is mutex doesn't allow calling the release mutex from outside the same thread that means if thread one has logged it only thread one has the permission to unlock it if any other thread tries to unlock it then that throws an exception so the, here it comes it overcomes the problem of ARE so now I hope you are clear with mutex so the last topic which comes in thread synchronization is semaphore semaphore unlike mutex is not a locking mechanism whereas semaphore is considered to be a signaling system so let's see how this works we'll jump into visual studio and this was the code which I was using for mutex so now instead of mutex I'll create a semaphore so I'll say static semaphore underscore semaphore equal to new semaphore now if you see the constructor of semaphore it expects two parameters first one initial count second one maximum count so let's try giving one comma one let me show you what happens and then I'll explain you the uh, significance of this so we'll remove this code and instead of using mutex now we will use semaphore so semaphore dot same like that how we used for uh, mutex wait one and at the end semaphore dot release so similarly this is the way how it works normal thread mechan thread synchronization mechanisms let's see what happens when we run it should work how uh, it was working previously like all the threads are waiting one thread is writing that thread completes writing the next thread starts when that thread completes next thread starts so it goes on like how it was going for mutex or ARE but now what comes into picture is these parameters here you can control how many threads you want to run in parallel so this is the initial count and this second parameter is the maximum count but one thing which you need to always keep in mind is the initial count should be always less than or equal to the second one so that means like if I give here 2 and if I uh, give the maximum count as 1 then as soon as you run it throws an exception so I'll just show you so it says the type initializer for thread synchronization demo 31 exception so you can read the exception the initial count for semaphore must be greater than or equal to 0 and less than the maximum count so here the initial count was more compared to the maximum count so this is not allowed so let me change it to 2 so well, let me stop this and change it to 2 so now you have given the initial count as 2 so now you see what happens when you run now you can see thread 4 is writing thread 3 is writing thread 4 completed thread 3 completed but meanwhile 5 and 6 started and when they both finished 7 started so now you can see two threads are going parallelly so this is kind of a signaling mechanism wherein you are trying to signal two threads at a time uh, when the work is completed so that means two threads will start this work parallelly and all the other threads will be waiting when both of them finishes then it will be given to the next one so this is how you can control it 
so in this video we have covered all these topics we have seen uh, how lock and monitor uh, locks a simple code so in most of your situations where you want to do a synchronization for your simple code you can use lock or monitor if your code uh, is in such a way wherein you want all the multi all the threads to wait when one special thread is doing some work and once that work is completed you want to signal all the threads then you can go for manual reset event or if the situation is wherein uh, you don't want all the threads to be signaled you want it to be signaled one after the other you can go for auto reset event but the only drawback which we saw with auto reset event was any other thread also can signal it but you don't if you don't want to to do that you want only the signal only the thread which uh, locks it should release it then go for mutex and the last we saw how semaphore works wherein we can control the number of threads to be start, uh, signaled at a time so i hope this clears all the topics of thread synchronization in c sharp thank you